Hello. This is yet another brief lecture in my series on post-colonial concepts. Thank you so much for joining me. If you uh, like the content in this video and my other videos, please do subscribe to the channel so that you can get the updates. Um, today I will be talking about ambivalence. And ambivalence is the ambiguous way in which colonizer and colonized regard one another. The colonizer often regards the colonized as both in inferior but yet exotic, while the colonized regard the colonizers as both enviable yet corrupt. And then in the context of hybridity theory, this often produces a mixed sense of blessing and curse. So to let's say to elaborate a little more, the term ambivalence itself kind of places itself in between the binary structure of the sign, right? So if you have read your Saussure or other linguistic uh, scholars, you already know that the sign system in Saussurean linguistics works through this binary structure. Now the binary structure of colonialism is that there is a colonizer and the colonized. The ambivalent space would be that is somewhere not necessarily in the middle, but which plays both aspects of the binaries, right? Where if I am a colonial subject, sometimes I can have or take on attributes of my own colonizer. And sometimes I revert back to whatever my own culture gives me as modes of identification or creating my own subjectivity. And the same thing happens to the colonizers too. So based on this concept of the ambivalent sign and ambivalence in culture itself, of course, Homi Baba is the biggest name who is a theorist of ambivalence. And his concept of hybridity then plays with this ambivalent position of the sign itself, but also of social identity. Because hybridity is a mixture of the two, maybe, or more than two strands of any cultural thing, but it also does not place itself either here or here, and is either something in between or has traces of both the extremes of the binary. So to be ambivalent then would mean, is it a productive thing? I think so. But what it would imply is that you don't necessarily have these hard binaristic positions about culture, about literature, about questions of identity, but that you're okay with a certain kind of slippage between different identities and that you're okay with understanding that the sign doesn't necessarily need to be deeply stabilized through a binary structure in which you're either this or that. So most post-colonial scholars then see ambivalence as a productive thing, as something that enables a more nuanced kind of life. And if you look at it, I mean, if you look at the life and politics around us, most of the times, the politics that's more enabling and more accepting is the politics that has that ambivalence to it, where we know who our opponents are, but maybe at a certain level, we're willing to talk to them, we're willing to negotiate to them. All of that is made possible by this ambivalence, which enables me to hold my own identity, but still say, I'm not going to deny my opponent's identity and I'm even willing to work with them. You could apply the same to literary studies in which we don't take either this or that positions, but place ourselves something in between. So overall, I see personally ambivalence as a more productive and more positive con uh, uh, concept. And of course, people like Homi Baba, James Clifford, and others who are theorists of hybridity uh, you know, pay a lot of attention to it and use it pretty much in most of their works uh, in the terms of to conclude, of course. Um, so in post-colonial theory, ambivalence is a position or a subjectivity that does not believe in or practice any kind of 
hard binary structures of self or cultural identification, but which is open to accepting or adopting influences from either side of the colonial divide, may it be the colonizer or the colonized, and hence it doesn't tend to be essentialist and fixed. Thank you so much. That's all I have today on this, and I will see you in one of my next videos on post-colonial concepts. Thank you so much for joining me here, and please stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.